Hello, welcome everyone. Please let me know if you can see me, if you can uh, hear me. All right, because it's yeah, it's, it's about the time. Okay, it's about the time we started. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there are some people who are watching me. All right, good. All right, so I'm very, very happy. Sorry for the noise, as you can hear, because my child just woke up and everyone is screaming in this part of the house. Uh, but okay, I hope that you can hear me, not them. Uh, all right, so my name is Anna Popławska, and I am. Um, I, I want to say mother of Agination Global, but I'm a co-founder of Agination Global together with Luisa Witowicz Vaga, who is my partner in this project. Um, I can see that, that we already have people from around the world uh, logging into the chat. Please let uh, let me know uh, where you are watching me. Okay, I can see that we already have some Czech Republic, of course Poland, um, and I'm really curious where you are from, uh, where you are watching us okay so please let me know okay slovakia all right so we have slovakia all right and i hope also different places all right that you're watching us okay so today the topic is uh qr codes in class okay in germany perfect okay that's very 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 nice uh qr codes in a classroom and I have a question to you have you ever used QR codes because the first time I trained teachers how to use QR codes was in 2015 but when I was preparing for this session and I looked through my materials and when I looked through all of the things um, I was really surprised because the date of the slides were like 2015-16 uh, I uh, in this presentation, you will see one photo from this um, <laughs> time when uh, when I was creating some slides because for me, for me it was quite funny it's during the past. But still, uh, the point is that QR codes are so... They were the, the first things that I was using and I was using to train teachers how to use technology because they are very, very handy. They are very easy to use by students, also by teachers. So that's the reason I just decided that I will um, go through uh, them again today during this presentation. But let's start with the question, what is a QR code? Not yet, I would like to use them, especially at some events uh, I do for the students. So I think that for special events, it, that they will be really, really great. So uh, first of all, what is a QR code? So a QR code is a kind of this black and white square that probably you've seen different places because QR codes weren't inv uh, invented for teaching. They were, of course, invented for business. They were invented for uh, conveying some information. So basically, when you scan a QR code, if you want to read a QR code, you need an application installed on your phone uh, called QR code scanner. If you have an iPhone, and that, I'm really curious if you know about that, because if you have an iPhone, uh, you don't need any special application to read QR codes. You just access your camera and you just uh, use it like a normal photo. You scan the QR code with your uh, phone camera uh, without any special app, and you can just click on the link that your uh, camera built in your iPhone shows you, and you visit the link hidden in the QR code. Uh, so it's really, really handy, and it's very, very uh, nice to you. So nice to you. So I'm really curious if you already heard about this functionality of iPhones. But if you don't have an iPhone, you have Samsung or whatever else, uh, you download from App Store and not App Store, Google Play uh, application to read QR codes. So then when you scan it with application on your screen, you see the destination that you wanted to reach, either a website or a photo or anything uh, which is hidden in a QR code. So you just scan it and on your screen, you see the target information and how teachers use it. So uh, QR codes are part of lots of different Mm, lots of different um, handouts for students. So there are lots of ideas where you can um, create them, um, activities for listening, activities for watching, because in a QR code, you can just hide everything, a video file or YouTube file, an article from a newspaper, anything you really uh, need. And you can just create lots of activities. Why is it useful? Because um, 
normally when you work with a with paper with your students, uh, it may be quite difficult for them to uh, rewrite the links just to watch it or um, to access things from their phones when they get you know handouts in paper. So then when they scan it, they can uh, easily access any information you need them to see or to watch or read on their phones. Or here uh, we have a handout for children when a children, for example, scan and they count legs, for example, or uh, they draw a monster, okay? So you don't have to have really uh, extensive texts uh, each time hidden. Or you can display some um, extra information for your students around the school. Uh, so you can display any messages, uh, talking posters, because you can also record your voice and hide it in a QR code or record a video of you and hide it uh, in a QR, for, uh, QR code. So lots of different ideas. And how to create a QR code? So it's very, very easy. You have lots of different applications. You have lots of different websites. So uh, I've been using uh, two of, of the, the websites recently. This one uh, is international. Um, there is also QR online if you're from Pol uh, from Poland uh, I will also paste you um, the Polish application so that depends uh, that depends uh, where you're from but if you are from Poland probably you've heard also uh, of uh, the second link that I'm just pasting now uh, the second one is in Polish so if you are from different country it may be quite difficult for you to use it but still um, when we move to uh, QR code monkey, yeah, it's for free. You uh, generate your codes for free. And you can basically hide in QR Monkey anything you want to hide, whether it's text or email or a link. So there are lots of different things you can just hide inside um, and then your students can scan it. In the beginning, when I was creating classes uh, with QR codes, it, for me, it was quite funny because uh, I didn't expect my students to love the idea of scanning each time. So they were totally crazy about scanning it. They because for them it was a kind of magic. They scanned uh, a code and they saw something, or they uh, saw something playing, or um, they were able to watch uh, YouTube, or uh, I was able to uh, hide a link or a picture inside. So for them, just the act of uh, basically scanning was uh, really fun and engaging. There's also one thing that lots of uh, people don't know. That's the slide that I told you from 2000, I think for 15, <laughs> from one of the um, uh, teacher training uh, sessions that I ran um, that time, because there's also a website called uh, webqr.com. And that's a website uh, which works with QR codes if you don't have phones in a in your classroom or you don't want your students to bring phones to your classroom or you just want them not to use phones okay uh, any of uh, the options is fine uh, if you are fine with it uh, but how it works so you open webqr.com on your computer so but you need to have active camera so uh, when you log into this website it activates your camera and then your students just bring QR codes and they scan it so I once had a game when my students it was a workshop uh, in a school where mobile phones were not allowed so I was asked to create an activity with the modern technology without basically phones uh, and computers, just having one computer of a teacher. So we had a kind of game where students uh, had to find hidden objects. Uh, they had exact uh, description where the objects are and they had to check if they were right. So they were scanning QR code if they found the right object. And while after scanning uh, it with a teacher's computer, which was connected to um, overhead projector or um, the, uh, the interactive whiteboard, um, they were just checking what was inside whether the, an the answer was fine or not. So it was a really, really cool thing uh, to do. And uh, we had lots of fun, although students were using just pieces of paper with QR codes that they were scattered around the classroom. And there was just one active computer with a, uh, with a set of students who were just doing tasks to find the QR code, which was really, really uh, fun for them. Uh, I know also from uh, another teacher, I didn't do this exercise with this web uh, application, but uh, my students, 
student told me that um, when someone did something right and as a kind of uh, surprise, uh, they um, gave students a kind of uh, free gifts. So you never knew what today you got. And for example, there was a song or a film to watch. So students kind of took a one piece of paper and they scanned it and then they saw what the reward was. So it was a kind of, um, let's say, reward for some points or for, for a good behavior when students were able to sing a song. So they didn't know what they kind of were choosing. So they had to scan and it uh, was displayed on the screen of the computer. But let's move to different class ideas of our QR codes. So for me, the primary use of QR codes um, is to hide long links. So uh, when I work with my students in class, when I give them handouts, when they get paper from me, uh, when I expect them to read something or watch something, uh, especially during class, I always paste a small QR code because normally when you create it, you, it, you can download it as a picture. So you, it's like kind of uh, pasting a picture to your document. And I always try to, uh, I always want my students to uh, do their homework on their phones because I teach now adults. Uh, and I know that if I counted on the situation, you know, that they go home, they open their computer in the evening and they look for my email uh, with homework, I know that they would never ever do their homework. So I always try to make homework quite handy without extra excessive activities so basically they take a piece of paper they scan it they watch it they answer five or six questions that they have on the page and um, the we'll say return on investment is always uh, better when it's easier to approach uh, homework also um, I use it to hide the link so especially it works very well with children when you hide uh, the links all around the classroom and they have to scan and they have to go around and look for hidden information. Or um, when we have, for example, reading assignment and I divide the reading text into parts and they have to go around, um, scan and decide uh, which part was the beginning, which one was the ending. And um, they cannot, of course... Uh, because it's not a piece of paper that they can put together. They have to read each part. They have to analyze, think what was here, uh, where is another part of their story, which code is first, which code is second. So it's another way of approaching lots of traditional activities that you normally cut on a piece of paper and your students are able to do it in a different way with technology. And uh, sometimes, because of course, I wouldn't do it during each class because if you do it each class, it's becomes uh, boring and students do not appreciate it that much. But if you do it from time to time, and especially during special events, as one of you already mentioned, students uh, get really, really crazy. Also in Poland, I'm not sure if your countries, we have something called escape room. And escape rooms are extremely popular now in Poland. Um, Maybe even it's outside class. So an escape room is a game where you have lots of different riddles to puzzles to solve. And if you solve them all, you get the extra code and you can leave uh, the closed room. The same happens uh, in a language classroom. So students have to um, solve lots of different uh, quizzes that the teachers prepare for them. And sometimes they have to look for questions or they have to look for answers. Um, and um, it's very nice when you... Just prepare it also with QR codes because I love when my students have access to different kinds of materials, not just reading from a piece of paper during class, but we really use mobile phones and we really use different forms of uh, delivering material, listening, writing, uh, and here watching and listening. So a QR code is a really nice thing to do. So you can also have a matching activities. For example, you can have questions and answers where your students have to match question and answer in a QR code or pronunciation in QR code or a missing vocabulary, which is missing from original sentence that they have to match. And they just can hear the word uh, in a QR uh, code because you can uh, place there just the pronunciation. Also, QR codes um, work as a really great extra practice for early finishers. So if you have a student who finishes early, usually, sorry, um, so then it's a really nice activity 
uh, it's a really nice uh, idea if you just put it um, when you just put um, uh, yeah I'm just reading your comments <laughs> so if you put uh, a QR code somewhere on a handout so when you have a handout and you just put a QR code somewhere in the corner and um, I, in the beginning, I thought, okay, because sometimes I have a problem with students who are better, uh, and I just hate when they sit, and some of them, you know, sometimes they just show you, like, oh, huh, you know, oh, okay, I've done, I'm, I'm getting bored, what now, teacher? So I have this rule uh, with a QR code that if they finish, they don't have to tell me that they finished, because sometimes I even don't, don't want to know that they finished. I don't want the rest of the class think that, oh, again, they finished and I haven't. So there are always extra activities that they can watch or they can read because you can also hide a link to an article. So you can, for example, create an activity or two, or two QR codes, one with uh, instruction, for example, and one uh, with um, the practice of material that they need to uh, read and answer the questions so you can play fun with your students so you don't need to give them extra handout with, you know for early finishers so you can just hide extra activities or a video or something that they do as a bonus at the end uh, of the lesson or at the end of an activity um I um, very often have in my classes students who are called Mighty Marias. I'm not sure if you have this kind of student who is called a Mighty Maria. So that's a student who knows everything. When I ask a question, the student always knows everything before anyone even starts processing the question. And that's my way to kill <laughs> Mighty Maria because Mighty Maria is busy doing other stuff that a student, different, different students probably even just notice, but this person is very, very happy to just do extra things and not to disturb me uh, during the class. So I totally recommend that. Um, also, QR codes in this way can offer, uh, and, and anyone said that she was one, I'm, ah, no, never, never, uh, no one said that they are Mighty Maria, no. Uh, okay, so I explain you what uh, Mighty Maria means. I was once um, on a training session by Paul Sellingson, and he was, uh, and the session was basically about king, uh, killing Mighty Maria, this student who uh, kind of uh, ruins basically your class because it takes you know, uh, time all, all the time of the teacher talks all the time and knows everything and doesn't let other students say anything. Uh, so it was one uh, of the ideas just to place a hidden exercise somewhere at the end or in the corner that they scan, they are able to do. But apart from the uh, extra practice, uh, I just now thought about one more thing uh, that I haven't placed on slides, but now I just recall that I often did when I was teaching children, because um, sometimes I wanted to tell uh, parents uh, something, or I just wanted to say how proud I was uh, um, with the development of the children, the progress that they uh, made. So I was able to hide a short video or audio. I will show you exactly in a second how to do it. Um, the students glued you know, to their notebooks because otherwise, you know, no one would kind of uh, show it to the parents because it would just fly away. So students, especially when you teach younger children, are able to just paste it, just glue the QR code into their notebook, either with an instruction what to do, either with a message to parents, either with anything you need your students to say. I also know that there are uh, some teachers who prepare, for example, for um, exams uh, or some types of probably exams or standard tests where you have some procedures that you need to explain the same things in the same way all over again. So it's again a nice thing um, to um, record it once or just record yourself in a video and just play it to your uh, students, parents or who, whoever you need uh, to explain. So that's a very nice thing and you just hide it in a QR code and your uh, students paste it into their notebook. So I hope that you enjoy uh, these ideas. Okay, so another thing is a talking book. Um, I don't have an exact picture that I wanted to show you because one, once I was in a library and there were some books uh, that children were able to choose 
and the box had a uh, hidden the QR, QR code wasn't hidden but the message was hidden where teachers described what the book was about and students were able to scan it listen and decide which book to choose uh, with a teacher telling what the book was about but still you can make your walls talk so you can uh, prepare posters uh, with your students where posters can really talk when students can record themselves and paste it in a um, QR code or you can just leave somewhere extra uh, instructions um, when your students uh, have to do something or they have to find something um, QR codes QR codes are also perfect for scavenger hunts where students have to look for some clues, items. And that's also one of my favorite activities that uh, I from time to time do with my students. So my students um, have to look for hidden information or they get a list of questions uh, and information um, has to be detected somewhere around the whole classroom. So they get a list of questions and they look for QR code. So they need to analyze QR code. Uh, they have to read the questions and they have to listen sometimes. Sometimes there's a picture, sometimes there is a sentence, sometimes there's a li link to an article, depending on the topic, of course, that you're covering. And of course, depending on the level of your students. Because uh, when I teach very intermediate students or, or advanced students, I don't care about the level, you know, I just paid, pays their everything. But when you um, teach very young learners, of course, you will use more pictures, probably um, recordings of pronunciation and very easy sentences, not full articles, right? So you just grade the level uh, of things you put inside a QR code. And students love lo looking for that. And the... Uh, the stranger the place where you place the QR code, the better, believe me. Under the desk, somewhere where they have to climb or they have to just, you know, just stick their hand. It was really, really, really funny. Students love it and they just scan everything. Also, um, there are different kinds of scavenger hunts. So sometimes um, I put uh, somewhere different items. For example, when I have a lesson with quite older students, and when I talk about models in the past and deduction and stuff, I always have a crime scene uh, in a classroom. It's something that I really love doing and they just love analyzing evidence. So uh, I, have a Q, a Q, I have QR codes with evidence inside, but they don't see the letters. The letters are for me. OK, so what is inside? Because um, that's something that I learned over the years. I don't use QR codes. I don't print QR codes with information what is inside because very often I print it I have 100 QR codes around my room and I don't know what is inside and I need to scan everything before um, creating the exercise so basically if I need something I just just write it for myself uh, what user uh, mm, I would just uh, uh, display it what user advantage do QR codes have over links in online lessons via Skype or Zoom um, because when you teach that's a very good question when you teach online and when your students can click on different things uh, then of course it's easier to click all right so it's easier to uh, look for information but if you display on the screen different QR codes when students have to listen for something on their mobile phone, uh, so then it's easier, okay? Because when you use lots of links, um, then your students will open lots of different windows on their computer. And they usually, and they, they're sometimes totally distracted. So when I use QR codes in an online class, okay, when I want them to match something or find information, so when you just start putting links in chat, their links open in different windows. And sometimes I prefer them to use their mobile phone and display something on the phone and still have the contact with me, not move to a different window. Okay, So uh, I would say that it would be the advantage of QR codes on during the online lesson. Uh, but of course, it depends what activity you prepared. Because if you teach online, of course, um, it's very handy to use links, of course, because then you just click. OK, but even if I teach online and I send my students uh, files uh, to print because they love printing, especially adults or um, kind of older adults, um, they appreciate having QR codes because they are able to print the exercise um, and they are able to do it um, without 
the computer because especially my uh, professional adults, they basically don't have time at home because they all have children. They don't have time. And then once they come home, they always tell me that, Anna, there is no way I open my computer because my wife or my husband will kill me for that. And I just have to do everything during the day when I have time. So they basically go for lunch and they have their English homework and they just quickly scan it. They always have their phone and they always tell me it's more handy to have it everything in one place. Of course, you can say that you can just, you know, everything can be clickable when you send them PDF. But still, I have lots of students who love writing with their pencil and they need to have it um, printed but depends on your students of course i'm showing you different ideas okay so also with the mystery hands so you have lots of you can leave different clues around the classroom also the thing that i like doing uh is basically I love working stations and there is something called QR working stations uh, and you can uh, create activities uh, or tasks for your students to assign um, in different places of the room. So you can just leave QR codes uh, in the places or you can ask them to analyze some events or write what happened during particular times of uh, life of some people and all of the information can be just disguised as a QR a code and uh, when I talked to, uh, told you about uh, the talking posters that's something that I absolutely love uh, and uh, I always hated posters in schools uh, on the, the school's wall walls um, which were kind of you know students took lots of time and there was just a picture something written but once you make them interactive you're able to listen to somebody telling you the story of a given place or, you know, the perfect holiday destination, it once becomes more interactive because you can uh, leave a YouTube video from this particular place. So if you want to talk about mountains or the best um, lakes around uh, your favorite mountain range, you are able to show the pictures, you are able to show uh, your picture, for example, pictures of yourself uh, just doing different stuff in, in the places that you describe or um, videos from YouTube, for example. So it, it really gets more and more interactive each time. So uh, if you work in a class, you can also display the codes on uh, interactive whiteboard. So you are able to just as uh, in the online class, uh, uh, Katarina, I think, uh, asked me. So you're able to display them and students can, for example, decide which question or which topic they want to discuss. Basically, when they decide which topic to discuss, they don't know what they are scanning, right? So they scan a black and white uh, square and they see the question to discuss with their partner on their mobile phone. So there are different ways how I steal my students' attention because, of course, you can say basically you can print it and you can give them a piece of paper to discuss. But once I create lots of slides with different questions and the slides keep changing every three minutes. For example, I use different background that they the students see that new QR codes appeared. So they are able to change pairs, go and scan it and go back and discuss something and again I change the slide and they, we have different questions they are able to scan again so it's very dynamic uh, of course it doesn't take the whole lesson but I always try my students to be motivated to speak to be kind of surprised with, sometimes with activities and I always want them to move because um, especially when you teach uh, adults uh, who sit a lot, who work a lot and they're always tired when they come to class because if you teach in the morning they are tired because it's morning and when you teach in the evening they are tired because they are just after a whole day of work. So basically always tired. So I look for these kind of activities to make them really, really um, eager to speak. This code unfortunately stopped listening, but it was one of the codes uh, that I found some time ago, I think seven years ago, uh, during one of the teacher training for teachers. And one of the teachers uh, created that uh, or used it uh, during his presentation. And um, that's not, I really love this idea because here you present a photo uh, and you tell a story uh, of the photo. So that's a kind of assignment where your students have to speak at home and they create a QR code. Uh, the tool I will uh, show in a second because it's very easy to hide your voice in a QR code. So basically it's not enough just nowadays <laughs> to bring just your photo to an English class. You also have to bring your story and you can record a story and you can just show everyone just a set 
a picture and a story and different students can listen to the stories. Um, that's I've heard of from one of the language schools where uh, teachers created their uh, biographies and they told about their life. So you are able, so you have the picture and you have the biography of a person. And also uh, what you could do uh, when I uh, looked at this exercise, I would cut <laughs> the QR codes and children and I would ask different children to listen to the stories and match the biography with the person uh, that was telling the story because I'm a huge fan of listening uh, during classes. Also, when you have some uh, vocabulary card and when you have uh, QR codes, you can uh, hear, for example, record uh, the description of an animal or you can uh, record a question that you want your students to answer once student has this card or uh, if you want to work more uh, with pronunciation you can ask your students to scan the code for pronunciation of the word and match it with the word that is written on a second uh, piece of paper and when it comes to creating uh, QR codes with voice, there is a very, very old website called Vocaroo. And I'm going to show you uh, that in a second. Uh, and for me, it's really funny to, um, to show this website because I think that I've been showing this Vocaroo website for the last seven years during different uh, teacher training sessions uh, because this website is really, really cool and very, very uh, useful. Okay, so basically, when you look at this website that's called vocaru.com, I will uh, paste you the link that you can see. All right, that's vocaru.com. That's vocaru.com. I will just make it show. Okay, that's the vocaru. That's the website that I'm uh, showing you. And the website is uh, quite old and is in Polish, but there is just one button, okay? There is just one button uh, in the middle. So your students uh, just click it and they record it. You just record it and you uh, click here. And basically, I think that you can also, uh, ah, you can change the, uh, uh, I, because now I was just surprised that it's in Polish, sorry. So once again, I will just start everything because I was sure the website was in English. Okay, so you go to vocaru.com. There is just one uh, button red inside. You click it and the message is recorded. So whatever you want to do here, you can just record any stories. It can be long, but don't make it very long. You play uh, stop and you can click save and share. And then you get the link. Okay, but link is not important here. You have QR code button here. And the story that you've just recorded, um, it's hidden in a QR code. So it's uh, really, really useful and very, very easy to use. So if you were thinking how to hide pronunciation of words, instruction for parents or messages for parents, uh, the pronunciation of words to this matching exercise, uh, Vocaroo is the easiest thing. So basically you say a word, you record it, you click save and you just save it here and then it saves as a PNG picture. So that's a normal picture you save to your computer and you are able to print it or use it in different software like Canva or Word or any documents uh, you use with your students. So it's uh, really handy and very, very uh, easy to use. Um, and I have, yeah, so I think that basically um, that was a very quick introduction to Vocaroo, which is a really, really nice website. And uh, I have a question to you, how to hide a video or a picture or a PDF file in a QR code, what would you say? How to hide it? Because I've already showed you how to hide audio uh, in a QR code, but how to hide a video or a PDF file in a QR code? What do you think? How to do it? Uh, okay, Renata says, I've never heard about this before, it's great. All right, yeah, because that's the reason I wanted to do this webinar, because I think it's it's been around six years, maybe, fr uh, from the last time I was talking about it. Okay, so how to hide a video or PDF file in a QR code? What do you think? How to hide it? How to hide it? I don't see any answers on the... So I will tell you because it's getting late. So basically, you can hide anything you have on your computer, uh, video files, uh, 
pictures, um, just basically when you use Google Drive or anything which turns documents uh, in a link form. So if you are able to share a document, if you use OneDrive uh, from Microsoft or Google Drive, so uh, remember when you upload a file and then you want to share it, you always, uh, when you share, get the link. So no matter what you place in Google Drive, you are able to share it also in a QR code. So you just take this link from sharing a document in Google Drive um, and you paste it in the uh, application where you create QR codes and that's all. Um, there's also one important thing. Remember the file has to be public because if the file is not public, it's just for certain people. People won't be able to open it with a QR code reader without logging in. Okay, so make um, settings public and then you're able to share uh, your uh, QR codes and anything basically you have uh, on your computer. So sometimes I put uh, old PDF files with old materials that we had with my students when they want to refer to some document that we had, for example, two months ago. So instead of telling my students, go to your notes and look for the file, for example, with irregular verbs, I tell them, scan the link and look at the list of the uh, irregular verbs we had last month. So it's, I think, less cruel for students, especially adults. Where uh, who basically can lose everything and don't remember what was uh, done during the previous lesson. So I hope that I gave you lots of ideas and I hope that I gave you lots of inspiration for uh, creating classes. I'm really curious um, if you uh, liked it and if uh, which ideas you liked the most because um, I love teaching and I love uh, teachers uh, to... Uh, really use uh, such ideas and to use basically uh, innovative technology. And I have one more information for you because uh, if you are frequent visitors of our webinars, you should probably know that in education, we always have some great um, deals for our uh, teachers uh, when we organize our events because education organizes uh, free um, teacher training sessions uh, each uh, Tuesday in Polish and every second Thursday in English. But also we, we run lots of uh, conferences. So um, if you'd like to take part in our Fluency Now conference, it will be in English and uh, it will be held on the 24th September. Of course, it's recorded. It will be recorded and available for 10 months to uh, watch, but we have a present for all of the people who already have signed up or who are planning to uh, sign up till end of holidays. And we have something which I think is absolutely great because um, we packed in a kind of gift pack three sessions by Penny Orr and for uh, probably young teachers who didn't read the old books by Penny Orr during your university time. Uh, Penny Orr is a kind of mothers of all teachers, especially for me. She's one of the most creative and I think one of the wisest people, uh, teaching people that I know. Uh, and she had amazing free sessions for education in the past. And we packed the sessions and it's a gift to this conference. Basically, the conference is also very nice because it's all about speaking activities, how to um, um, help your students master fluency and speaking faster. And we will also have Scott Thurnbury who will be talking about fluency, how to achieve it. Uh, I will have uh, my session about fear of speaking, how um, uh, you can help your students fight it. Uh, lots of different specialists, Paul Sellingson, Magda Zawadzka, Jamie Keddy, Dr. Monika Cichmińska, um, Andrew Kahn, Eva Torebko, Luisa Wojtowicz-Waga, Mogosia Klecuń, Anna Nakonieczna, Ola Mikrut, um, Katarzyna Kłopska, Kasia Warszyńska, uh, who will have a session about teaching pronunciation using images, because Kasia is a, a real expert on teaching pronunciation. So lots of different sessions, uh, and I hope that you are going uh, to really enjoy it and like it. And if you want to sign up, um, here, is the, uh, here is the link. I will just give you the link. Uh, so you can just visit uh, the website, have a look at um, the sessions and all of the things that 
uh, we want to uh, teach you because we decided that we need a session devoted to, uh, for speaking skills and fluency skills, but not just in speaking, but also in different uh, skills. Uh, it's uh, at the end of September. Um, and if you like my ideas, if you like different ideas of different students, so you are more than welcome to take part and to uh, sign up. And to be honest, I would really sign up uh, now for the free sessions of Penny War because I've seen all of them and I think that they're absolutely brilliant. You can trust me because she's really, really wise, a wise woman and I think one of the best teachers that I know in my life. Okay. So guys, that's all what I wanted to tell you. That's all what I wanted to share. So please stay with the Education Global. If you have any teachers who don't know about any webinars, either they are from Poland or from different place, tell them because we really teach for free and there are no hidden catches. There are no hidden you know, ways that we just get your money away because uh, in Poland we treat it and now internationally we really treat it as a mission we really treat it as a project where we of course advertise because basically that's our work but we just want to welcome each teacher who wants to try it also for free with us uh, and we provide quite a, quite a lot of different topics so every second Thursday feel free to, uh, in, uh, to visit us and we really keep our fingers crossed for you visiting our uh, conferences because this one is in English uh, in September. All right. So thank you very much for visiting me today. Uh, thank you for, for your very kind and warm participation. And I hope to see you during Fluency Now conference. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.